First of all, I would like to congratulate the Finnish Center for Pensions for uh, organizing this conference uh, and for uh, inviting such interesting speakers. You really laid the, uh, the ground for a very uh, good discussion uh, on, on pensions, but once I, I received your presentations yesterday, I uh, sort of panicked because there was really nothing much to add uh, after uh, you've done your work. Um, I tried to adapt my presentation so that it would be less of repetition, but maybe some echoing of uh, what previous uh, talks have been about. So uh, I would try to, to take a bit of a broad, uh, maybe loose perspective on, on these issues. Uh, try to, to talk about uh, retirement and inequality in terms of the old social question uh, that triggered the whole sort of development of the welfare state uh, by pointing to the old age as the life cycle phase that was the, the big social issue in the late 19th century uh, to what I see as a new social uh, question emerging uh, uh, in ancient societies. I would say something uh, around what kinds of, of paradoxes and dilemmas that I see associated with, with pension reforms. Uh, and this sort of talk will be then organized around some empirical realities uh, with regard to both how uh, inequality uh, in income and health uh, can be uh, analyzed uh, among the elderly. Uh, something around life expectancy and then moving on to uh, a group uh, that I now uh, have found myself to belong to, namely the, to the pre-retirement elderly. Uh, I, I'm trying to launch this, this concept. Um, and I will start with, with uh, uh, taking a, a sort of broad historical perspective on the development of, of, of uh, pension systems uh, as a way of, of dealing with uh, uh, the threat of, of old, old age uh, poverty. Uh, and I, I think that we can see uh, that uh, in uh, what we now see as, as the Western world, uh, this has uh, developed along rather different development paths. Uh, uh, and I think that some concept might be useful in terms of guiding our understanding how uh, retirement systems uh, are related to inequality. And uh, I think it makes sense to distinguish between, uh, on the one hand, basic security, and on the other hand, uh, income security. Uh, and that uh, Britain and the Nordic countries have followed the basic security path, and, and uh, continental European countries, maybe the uh, Bismarckian and later income security path to other security. But over time, uh, since we know a real exception, uh, uh, the Western countries have combined different kinds of programs in order to meet both these goals. But the mixes of, of the programs differ, and that uh, has repercussions in, in terms of affecting. Uh, old age inequality. Uh, and I think the point I want to make is that it, it's useful to look at these entitlement structures in addition to the traditional focus on, on public spend, expenditures, even if we can weight the expenditure by the, the uh, number of old age people, because I think that's, of course, important in terms of understanding its repercussions. So when we uh, look at uh, uh, old age pension systems. I, I have here two indicators. Uh, uh, the lower graph shows the uh, the coverage rate of, of uh, old age pension systems among the uh, population in working age from 1930 up to uh, 2010. So we have uh, 1930, 2010, and as you see, among the working aged, it's sort of is, is a expansion of these programs up to the uh, uh, mid-1970s, uh, and here we see a kind of maturation around 8%. And this is sort of uh, the, the proportion of the population either contributing uh, to uh, old age pension or uh, having the right automatically once they reach uh, old age. The second indicator is the take-up uh, uh, in, in the population above 65. 
you see that uh, that graph is uh, uh, indicating a high proportion, and this has to do with the fact that uh, there are also other income-tested uh, pensions that are uh, comp complementing the uh, contributory assistance. And because some countries have a lower pension age than 65, and some countries also give one or two pensions uh, to, to people, uh, you get uh, uh, in a more than 100% uh, take up rate uh, among the uh, elderly, indicating that, that we have now in, in mature systems uh, um, pretty much a sort of universal take up of public pension systems uh, among the elderly. And that uh, sort of expansion in terms of coverage has also been, been uh, uh, paralleled by uh, expansion of uh, uh, basic security pro provisions and income security provisions. Uh, and as you see, the, uh, that uh, expansion of basic security starts at very low, modest level, below 10% of an average wage in, in 1930. Uh, to uh, up to around 40 uh, percent, and then we have uh, income security, uh, uh, including also earnings-related uh, benefits, uh, which which uh, is then sort of maturing at the at the, uh, at the higher level. But since the mid 1980s, we see a, a stagnation, even a slight decline in these patients. But it's not a massive reduction of of what uh, you re retired. Uh, pensioners in, in the Western world can look forward to. Uh, now, uh, so this is, these are the development of the entitlement structure. Second, uh, move to then to study inequality among all people. I think it's important to distinguish it between at least three dimensions here. So we have the, the, the what I call here the generation gap. I mean, how the income levels of, of the elderly part of the population relates to the working age. We have the uh, traditional inequality measure, that is how much, much inequality there is among old people. And then uh, the poverty rate is, in a way, combining a relational uh, component towards uh, the working age, because it's uh, uh, in defining the poverty th threshold also includes uh, the incomes of, of uh, the working age, with the uh, distribution component in, in terms of counting those. Of, incomes that are not sufficient to get right above this. And when we then and, uh, do this in a very stylized form, uh, try to, to think about how these uh, pension variables are related to the inequality uh, dimensions, uh, we can have different thoughts of, uh, about this. And there are competing views of, about how we should uh, see these things. Uh, and I won't go into details uh, about these uh, hypotheses, but but it, it's clear that, that some uh, pension variables have a clear goal in, in, in one of the dimensions than in, in other dimensions. And when we uh, empirically examine this and relate the, 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 this in a comparative study of, of how the pension systems relate to the inequality outcomes, this is also a stylized uh, version of, of how uh, these correlations appear. Uh, so whereas uh, expenditures are, are good in terms of, of uh, lifting the uh, over average income levels of old, old people, if we want to understand how we can reduce poverty, we, we will have to look for the basic security components of all the pension systems. Uh, and they are important both in terms of affecting poverty and inequality among old people. Uh, but income security also has an effect uh, and that comes uh, in addition to the basic security component when it comes to reducing overall inequality uh, among, among the other. And uh, in, in terms of then understanding why uh, we get these uh, results, why it's important to look at the, uh, the design of the pension systems and uh, uh, not only at the expenditure levels, uh, we need to take more of a political economy perspective in, in terms of looking how the pension systems actually organize uh, the interests uh, of different uh, sectors of, of society in, in sort of uh, in, in the best possible way in order to promote uh, uh, 
in social outcomes. And, and here we have, uh, actually in a paper written by Walter Korp and myself, but I think it was originally an idea from Ole Kangas. And I'm sorry to mention Ole Kangas, he's from Kela, and, and I'm at, uh, at Pankhung Schütz Centralen, but uh, forgive me for that. But, uh, but the, uh, the, the simple idea is that, that if you really rely on, on uh, policy instruments that are exclusively uh, directed to the poor, you don't create a, a, a coalition, a majority in the population in order to, to support uh, those in need. Um, and this is why it makes sense to, in various ways, include uh, the better off in society. Uh, and I think this, it's important here that this counts both the basic security provisions and the income security provisions. So, so countries that have a universal basic component end up with more generous benefits for poor people. Uh, and also uh, countries that have uh, income security going up, high up in the income hierarchy um, seem to be ending up with more equal pension, pension provisions uh, because they crowd out uh, more uh, unequal private provisions. And here is, is uh, uh, to celebrate the Finnish, Finnish pension system. Uh, uh, an attempt to, to illustrate how, how this works by looking at the income distribution uh, among old people. Uh, and if you first look at, at the red graph, that is uh, symbolizing the inequality of the public pension provisions. And here looks... Sorry? This, this is old stuff. Uh, I, I would still say that this, this works uh, roughly today, but, but I, I'll, I'll come back to, to uh, the future about it. So this is history. It looks bad for Finland, high inequality when it comes to the public pensions provisions, but uh, when you then add uh, uh, all the private provisions, you, you see then a reversed uh, rank order, so that countries that are really targeting the, the pensions to the, the poor end up with uh, the more unequal uh, uh, incomes among, among the others. Um, I think this is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Finland is in a unique position in terms of having no, uh, no ceilings uh, and a, a sort of a, a regulation that, that counts for, for all sectors of society. Not only is that an advantage in, in, in in terms of creating coalitions, but also in terms of, of economic efficiency. Um, so this is uh, uh, old stuff, but the old stuff does not only count for, for incomes. I also would like to say something around health issues. Uh, and uh, the health issues uh, can be studied uh, in two ways. Uh, one very effective way to study health is to look at uh, mortality. It's a bit contradictory, but it's, it's a good uh, health indicator. Uh, and the other is to look at more general health conditions. So I'll, I'll briefly refer to two studies that I've, I've been involved in. Uh, first is, is taking this uh, uh, perspective on, on old age mortality and doing the, the same thing uh, using the same kind of, of, of entitlement data uh, for the same set of uh, in other countries and looking at, at changes over time and, and linking changes in, in pension uh, uh, provisions to changes in, in mortality. And what we call old age excess mortality, mortality that is different uh, relative to uh, the population in working age. I, I won't go into details uh, with this regression analysis, but, but what we find here uh, is that when we look at uh, women and men, uh, there is a clear uh, correlation not only between GDP level, but also the, the quality of the uh, basic security component. But the income security component doesn't add anything in terms of reducing the uh, mortality rates. Uh, so that might be good news for Kerala and, and bad news for, for uh, uh, the 
Finnish uh, said for patience, but uh, this is how the result, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, we can also uh, look at, at uh, not mortality, but, but separated health, and do the same analysis basically, but here we only had access to, to cross-sectional data. And, and the basic idea is the same, that you, you sort of uh, raise the resources of, uh, of, of uh, old people, uh, and uh, that uh, this can be done with both the basic security and mental security components. Uh, and the out outcome is studied then in, in terms of, of self-rated health and, and well-being. Uh, and the results uh, are basically the same, basic security matters. So uh, the my take here is, is that we, we know how to reduce inequality in retirement for old people. Uh, and we know that uh, uh, there's a point in, in sort of combining uh, universal provisions with uh, uh, universal earnings related components. Now, and I'm sorry this is, uh, that this is uh, sort of the Finnish model or the Nordic model, uh, but uh, I think that, that uh, the, uh, the, the results are clear. And, 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 uh, but my point here is that uh, we have to look for the future to, to identify uh, the new social questions. Uh, and I, I think that uh, we need to think in the same terms, uh, in terms of how we design our systems uh, in order not only to pr promote sort of resource distribution, but also how we create a good uh, political condition. Uh, and when we're looking ahead, we can be sure that we will have an aging crisis. Uh, even if, you know, things may change, I, I think we can be, be fairly sure in that prediction. And that raises a number of issues. And my basic point is that, that uh, well, uh, we know that uh, not only pension systems, but also other social systems are strongly redistributed of the life cycle. So we can be sure that the pressure on the public finances will, will increase. Uh, but uh, my basic take is that we've been discussing this too much in terms of uh, uh, the pension system design, but as previous speakers have been pointing to, there are other opportunities to address these challenges, which, which is more and stronger related to the uh, task of uh, uh, increasing the number of, of taxpayers for the future. Uh, and here, the, the whole issue of, of sort of human capital formation comes in, into the focus. And, and we know that countries in, in our part of the world that have been investing more in education have also been growing uh, faster uh, on average. Uh, and uh, we, we also know that uh, uh, stable population uh, development is, is an asset for the future, but uh, that the expansion of higher education uh, is a risk in terms of lowering fertility. So we need to think uh, not only in terms of uh, education and constant human capital formation, but also a fertility family formation. And that has a clear uh, obvious gender component. Uh, but of course then we cannot only uh, deal with the, uh, with the uh, aging crisis with, with thinking about the future tax base. There are some things that have been done uh, and, and will be done uh, in relation to pensions. Uh, and when we look at the broad patterns we can see that there is a uh, when it comes to the contributory systems, a clear move in the direction of, of uh, prolonged uh, periods for qualification. And in some countries, like uh, my own country, there's been a move from uh, defined benefit systems to defined contribution systems. And universalism has been, been uh, challenged in, in, in various ways, uh, and we've seen components of, of pre-funding also in, in this Swedish case. And we also see, and has been evidenced here by previous speakers, uh, a number of changes come to uh, uh, making uh, the fact that we live longer uh, make pensions basically lower. Uh, now, when we look again, take the long historical perspective here, uh, from 1930, the contribution period required for a full pension in, for workers have been growing uh, ever since pension systems were started. And this was partly due to the fact that, you know, 
systems have been maturing. Also, that provisions were made more generous uh, in, in, the, uh, in the early periods of, of uh, the pension system, so you could actually get the full benefit very fast. Uh, and then that started to uh, sort of actually uh, stagnate here, and then uh, for the last 20 years we, we, we saw uh, a change uh, so that a number of countries actually changed their old benefit formula and made contribution periods. Yeah. At the same time, uh, we also see uh, a move away, and this was again pointed to by, by a couple of the previous speakers from supporting people in pre-retirement. So when you look at the 18 OCD countries from the early 1980s to now, we've seen that in terms of spending uh, in relation to GDP, pre-retirement programs have really declined. And this cannot be explained by, by demographics, even though it might have contributed uh, um, most recent years. Uh, so this is two uh, processes that are going on at the same time. Uh, tougher uh, conditions and less sort of targeting of, of this, uh, as I would argue, uh, difficult uh, transition uh, phase uh, in, in, the, in the life course. In addition to that, uh, and maybe in addition to what was captured by previous speakers, uh, when we look at what has happened uh, during the uh, economic crisis and its aftermath, uh, and here uh, I've changed the perspective from, from the 18 news D countries to the member states of the European Union. Uh, this graph is uh, intended to, to show the, how changes have been made in the old age pension system in regard to making it easier or more difficult to uh, qualify for, uh, for pensions. And whereas there was some uh, easing here uh, in the early part, we see a larger number of changes going in the tougher direction. Uh, and it, it happens mostly after uh, the economic crisis. So the, the, the general trends have, have not been, been sort of eastened after the crisis, they've been, been sharpened. Uh, and this same goes for, uh, for retirement age. We, we see this. Uh, so the development uh, sharpening. Um, I think in addition then to, to thinking about this, we need to think about not only the general trends, but also how uh, different uh, risks are distributed in the population. Um, for a brief moment, uh, move to <coughs> those about 60 and beyond, and then uh, move slightly back uh, <coughs> this is the survival curve of men and women in Sweden who have reached the age of 60, uh, indicating that uh, women are blue they survive better than men. And this is not a unique Swedish phenomenon, it's not a universal phenomenon everywhere, but it's, uh, I think, important for understanding also how important old age pensions are, are in, in general terms. Uh, there are also class differences. Uh, so white collar survive blue collar. Uh, uh, who survive the, the non-employed, uh, and uh, I think this is also what you see in other countries with with some variation. So here you you have sort of things going in a bit different direction, but but this indicates that better off people uh, benefit from old age pension systems more than than those who are worse off. So here we have a, a challenge: why have this public pension system that is helping the rich uh, survive well in their old age for, 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 for a large number of years. So, but I guess this is what sort of social insurance, social policy is about, that you share different kinds of risks uh, and 
they are not only always favoring the low-income people. And as you see, when you compare uh, the gender differences, they are much bigger in, in Sweden than the, than the class differences. Um, so we have uh, these uh, trends in, in life expectancy, and when I was looking in connection to the Swedish pension reforms in the 1990s, on the health differences among the pre-retirement elderly, uh, we also found that here we have uh, uh, substantial uh, differences. Uh, I would first just point to the fact that we have clear class differences uh, between uh, white collar workers at different levels and blue collar workers at different levels. Here are odds ratios for experiencing uh, ill health uh, in three age groups, 59, 55 to 59, 60, 64, 65, 69. The most pronounced actually before 60. But here we also know that the exit rate is fairly high among the blue collar workers. So we can expect that, that that some have re already retired and benefited health-wise from, from that. Uh, differences between men and women are also substantial, so that women uh, experience more of health problems in the pre-retirement period, but they live longer. So insofar as you cannot earn pension entitlements due to health re reasons, women are likely to uh, be punished by that sort of for, for a larger number of, of years. Uh, than that. Now, uh, starting from the Swedish case, we also uh, have looked at a uh, bit of the international pa pattern here uh, in an attempt to, to see uh, both uh, at uh, you know, what are the health differences, uh, what are the factors driving health, health differences, and uh, sort of repeated uh, the, the kinds of analysis we did for the, the old age population for the pre-retirement population. Um, I won't have the time and uh, I won't uh, sort of uh, torture you with, with a detailed uh, discussion of this. Uh, I will um, just uh, move to the conclusions uh, and, and point to the fact that, that uh, when we hear, again with the focus of the European Union member states, look at this, uh, we still see that uh, the, the level of economic development, how rich a country is, has repercussions from, for the health status among uh, these. And thinking about this in, in sort of uh, life course terms, we, we can uh, also understand that, that those who are in pre-retirement ages in Eastern Europe uh, and Southern Europe grew up under very different economic and, and political conditions. Uh, social protection had very small effect in terms of, of uh, uh, affecting the, the health status in this group. But what really seemed to matter is, is the, the job quality. So the, when we look at the, uh, the job quality, that seems to matter for this group. And I think this is important also in relation to the issues that you've been discussing this, this morning around what makes people willing to, to continue to work. And quality of jobs seems to be very critical. Um, but I think the, what this points to is, is that there, there is a dilemma here in, in, in the sense that, that uh, a prolonged working life might come into conflict uh, with uh, other, other, other uh, with social objectives in terms of, of violent groups. But as far as it sort of punishes people and forces people to work, even if they have severe health problems, we, we have a, a problem stemming from uh, this double change in terms of uh, tougher conditions and, and less of compensation. Also, when it comes to, to the income situation, I, I think the, uh, the, we have been shown that there is really no huge sense of concern in, in the sense that there has not been dramatic uh, impoverishment of, of uh, not the old people, not the uh, sort of pre-retirement in, in uh, among the Western world uh, countries. But still, when we look uh, a little bit uh, in terms of stratification in this group. 
uh, when I looked at, at this, uh, we see a kind of hierarchy between different uh, people uh, in this group. So uh, there is a, a clear uh, division here of welfare in terms of those who have earnings are better off than those who don't. And among those who, uh, who don't have earning a, a earnings as a main source of income, those who can rely, rely on retirement programs have a better economic situation than those who rely on social insurance. And those have a better uh, position than those who have to rely on social assistance. But it's also a hierarchy and the distance between different, these different groups uh, varied by country. And here again, uh, the way that uh, social security systems provide for income security and basic security matters. And this is also for understanding other kinds of divisions uh, depending on how we uh, define these groups. So in terms of how we organize protection for this group, th this has consequences for inequality associated with various forms of retirement. I think the, the basic me message I have is, is that uh, if we want to sort of address this, uh, as I see it, as a new social question, we need to sharpen our research tools and to have a very program-specific uh, approach here. And this uh, is very challenging when it comes to pre-retirement envy because they are uh, sort of using a myriad of different kinds of income provisions that we call different things in different countries. Uh, but this uh, uh, makes it uh, no, not the less important uh, research to, uh, task. Uh, when we look at what the European Union do, I, I think they have made a significant advancement in their social reporting uh, in terms of defining better variables related to the protection systems and more sensible outcomes. Uh, and this is how they describe the situation in in the southern European countries when it comes to old age and, and the survivors and, and key outcomes here. Uh, and I, I think that it, to move further in this direction also when it comes to more specific groups such as the pre-retirement elderly or youth uh, entering into the labor force as another sort of transition group uh, uh, would be an interesting way forward. Um, I also think that I want to echo uh, Paul Ficker's, uh sort of plea for uh, having a um, and the uh, uh, also a program for looking at various kinds of, of uh, interventions combined. And I, I think there is an interesting discussion going on in relation to the social investment approach, which has been criticizing criticized for crowding out. Uh, traditional social policy measures such as uh, social assistance and social insurance. Uh, and I think there is a clear argument that if uh, uh, new forms of, of social policy such as social investment or activation is uh, being expanded at the expense of other provisions, uh, I think they are likely to have uh, less advantageous effect in, in the long run uh, on the uh, young generation. Uh, and in the short run also may uh, threaten the position of vulnerable groups such as, as the pre-retirement and, and I think that, that uh, there the are good reasons for, for combining activation and, and social protection. Uh, and from a gender perspective, it's also important to, to highlight the importance of, of social services that would actually enable uh, um, women to not only uh, um, get a reasonable, reasonable income in the short perspective, but also to sustain a secure pension for the future. My last comment will be uh, taking, again, a, a slightly broader perspective on this and, and uh, uh, sort of thinking about uh, retirement uh, in a generational uh, perspective. And uh, it will also be promotion of a, of a new book uh, that will be coming out here in, uh, in the autumn. It's a joint project with colleagues at the uh, Stockholm University, uh, which has been based on, on the same kind of uh, both 
philosophy and, and uh, same kind of uh, institution analysis. And what we've done is that we've looked at how uh, social protection systems actually protect people over different phases in the life cycle. So starting from, from sort of families with children, moving on to the working age, namely um, protection in terms of unemployment and sickness, work accident, and then moving on to, to old age. And here we have sort of identified that there are groups of countries that, that uh, protect, you know, have different profiles on the protection. So we have some countries that have a sort of balanced uh, generation contract. They protect all age groups well. Uh, and then there are some countries, mainly in, in the uh, southern Europe, that have an unbalanced uh, pro-old contract. And then there are some countries that have a uh, through working age to contract. And, and what we find here is that while this has been a pronounced pattern historically, there's been a sort of move towards more balanced contracts. But we also can uh, observe that countries with balanced co contracts tend to be more generous to all age groups. It's not that protecting the old is crowd necessarily crowding out protection for for other age groups. And moreover, uh, this seems to be generating not only more generosity, but also other advantageous social outcomes, such as lower poverty, higher social trust, etc. And uh, our uh, in sort of argument here is that uh, you create, uh, by having a balanced contract, uh, uh, a more uh, a broader coalition for supporting uh, uh, the welfare state, much in the same way as, as we have observed when it comes to the paradox of redistribution. So, uh, supporting uh, age groups in, in a balanced way is generating uh, more generosity overall. And, and if we can combine this with, with uh, sort of uh, sound economic incentives and sound uh, social incentives in terms of, of production, of reproduction of the population, uh, then I think uh, this uh, uh, has uh, a, a message in, in terms of uh, how we should think about uh, retirement and, and inequality. But I, I still think that this is the old world. We need to also look at the new social questions uh, in relation to the important transitions to the labor market and, and from the labor market. And if you want to read uh, all of this, there will be a book out uh, later this autumn. Thank you very much.